Shalom, shalom l'kulam. Today we are going to the very final lesson. We're going to study the Tav as a suffix. And let's go to the scripture. Breshit Gimel, Pasuk Arba Esrei, Genesis 3, 14. Vayomer Yehovah Elohim El Hanachash, Ki Asita Zot, Arur Ata, Mikol Habehema, Umikol Achayat, Genesis 317 in the first um, group of scriptures, we see that um, the father is talking first to the snake. And he said, because you have done this. So it's from the verb asa, ayin, sin, he. And when we put this verb in the perfect tense, we lose a hey, we get the yud. That's a whole different lesson. But we see the tav with the kamats under it. And so this is, why did you do this? And so this is the one use for the tav as a prefix. It's a past tense, singular, masculine, second person. Why did you do this? And in the second verse, he's speaking to Adam. And he says, because you listened, shama ta. So we see that tav with the kamats, it's the perfect tense for Adam, second person. He's speaking to him. He says, why? Because you listened. Root bet pasok shmona betesha. Vayomer boaz el root. Halo shamat biti. Al telchi lilkot besade acher. Vagam lo ta'avuri mize vecho tid bak in im na'arotai. Anayach basade asher yik tsorun vahalacht achare hen. Halo tsiviti et hana'arim. Levilti nig ech. Vit tamit vahalacht el hakelim. Vishatit me asher. We also see that it's used for the second person singular feminine past tense. It just takes a shva instead of the kamatz. So, uh, as always, when we're looking for things feminine, we have to go to the book of Ruth, and we see that Boaz is talking to Ruth, and he says, Did you not hear? Instead of shamata, we see shamaat the Tav with the Shva. And again, when um, he says, uh, you, it's the actually Vav conversive, you will go, Halachat. Um, so we see the Tav with the Shva. You, it, it really reads the past tense, you went, but because of the Vav, it's conversive, you will go. Bereshit Aleph Pasuk Shtayim, Genesis 1-2 V'aretz hayta tohu vavohu v'choshech al p'nei tahom v'ruach Elohim merachifet al p'nei ha-mayim Breshit lamid bet pasuk esrim b'echad Genesis 32-21 V'amartem gam hinei avdecha Yaakov acharenu Ki amar achapra fanav b'mincha haholechet lefanai v'acharechen ere fanav ulai yisa fanai. The singular feminine in the uh, participle tense, or what we would consider to the pre be the present tense, also takes a tav at the end. So in uh, the first verse from there in Genesis, we see that the spirit of Elohim is fluttering over the waters. And this verb is used specifically for a bird that's hovering 
um, and the wings are just kind of flapping in order to hover over the nest. And the word there is mirachefet, um, so the mem is a prefix, the root is resh chet pe, and that tab at the end is because ruach feminine is feminine. Ruach, the spirit, is feminine. In the second example, we see the verb holech, to go, and you know this verb, halacha, the way we go, and it is holechet, it's feminine. It's feminine for the mincha, for the gift. And he's saying, Jacob is saying, buy this gift, which is going before me. It's a gift that he's sending to his brother to appease his brother for things that have happened in the past. So we see the top at the end, holechet. Bereshit Lamed Zion, Pasuk Shalosh, Genesis 37.3 For Yisrael Ahav et Yosef mikol banav, ki ven zkunim hu lo, v'asa lo ketonet pasim. Shemot Lamed Vav, Pasuk Shtemesre, Exodus 36.12 חמישים לולאות עשה בירייה האחד, וחמישים לולאות עשה בקצה הירייה אשר במחברת השנית, מקבילות הלולאות אחת אל אחד. מזמור כה, פסוק חמש עשרה. עיני תמיד על יהובה, כי הוא יוציא מרשת רגלי. Tav is also used as a noun suffix on feminine nouns. So in the first verse we see uh, Joseph's coat, uh, which was not of many colors, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the coat is ketonet, and that Tav at the end is a feminine ending for the noun. The adjective there is pasim, and we've talked about this in other places. Pasim does not mean many colors. Pasim means that the length of the sleeves or the length of the coat was until the ending of the arm or the ending of the leg. That uh, root, pe, samach has to do with something coming to an end, uh, an ending point. So, ketonet pasim just means that it was a long sleeve coat or a long coat to the ground. Why is it interpreted as many colors? Because at the border of the arm or the border of the coat, uh, it would be a certain embroidery that would show the um, social standing of the person. And so, only a rich person would have this kind of embroidery at the border of their coat. So that's how it comes to be translated many colors, but it has nothing to do actually with being many colors. It has to do with the fact that it's long till the end of his arm, as long as his arm is. In the second piece from Exodus, we have the, uh, the talking about the loops hold, that are holding the curtains. Um, for the uh, Mishkan, for the tabernacle. And it talks about the places where the curtains are seamed together. And so this word is machberet. Now, if you are a modern Hebrew learner, uh, this word might perk up your ears because a machberet is a notebook. And it has to do with the idea of the joining of them together. You see the root in there is chaver. A chaver is a friend. A chaver is somebody that you are joined together with. Um, again, it's got a tav ending. Machberet is a feminine noun. Uh, one more example uh, from Psalms. Reshet. Reshet is a, a noun that means a net. And we see the tav at the end. It is a feminine noun. Reshet Aleph, Pasuk Shloshim. Genesis 1. 30. Ulochol chayat ha'aretz, ulochol of ha'shamayim, ulochol rames al ha'aretz asher bo nefesh chaya, et kol yerek esev la'achla v'yehi chen. Ruth bet pasuk shalosh, Ruth 2, 3. V'telech v'tavo, v'telaket v'sadeh achare ha'kotsrim, 
ויקר במקרה חלקת השדה לבועז אשר משפחת אלימלך. This next example demonstrates a function of Hebrew which is called smichut, or uh, the construct. So when we have two nouns that are strung together, um, we think of them kind of the meanings of leaning one to, on one to another. And probably the most common example of this you know is when the word bayit is put with maybe a place name or the name of somebody. And then that word changes from bayit to bait. And maybe some of you were actually wondering about why do we say bait lechem, but when we're talking about a house, we say bayit. And this is the reason. It is the smichut. Uh, we would think of it in English as being of. Okay, we can't say, there's no way to say David's house uh, with that kind of possessive s that we have in English. In Hebrew, you have to say the house of David. So the bayit changes from bayit to bait, and we say bait David. We don't say bayit David, we say bait David. And that's an example of smichut. For uh, feminine nouns that end in hey, that hey will change to this final tav when they're in smichut. So in the first example in Genesis, it's talking about all the animals of the earth, everything that is living on the earth. Normally, that word would be chaya, from chai, from chayim, living. A chaya is a living thing. Sometimes it's translated as even a wild animal. But this is the living thing of the earth. So instead of chaya, we see chayat with a tav. In these uh, example from Ruth, it's talking about the portion of the field. A portion is a chilek or a chilka. And here it has that tav suffix. It's the portion of the field. Uh, also, we see that uh, Boaz is of the family of Elimelech. And so you know the word for family is mishpacha. And here, because it's the family of Elimelech, it's a possessive idea, that hey at the end of mishpacha becomes a tav. Mishpachat Eliezer, Elimelech. Mishpachat Elimelech, the family of Elimelech. Breshit Aleph, Pasuk Sheshesre, Genesis 1, 16. Via Elohim et shnei hamaorot hagdolim et hamaor hagadol lememshelet hayom veet hamaor hakatan lememshelet halayla veet hakochavim. Zachariah Chet Pasuk Hamesh, Zechariah 8, 5. Urechovot ha'ir yimal'u yiladim biladot, misachakim berechovoteha. The final use for the Tav suffix is in the feminine plural, and uh, we see this right away in Genesis when it's talking about God making the lights in the heavens. So uh, even though the word ma'or, which means light, is masculine, it takes a feminine plural here, me'orot. Um, and you can see by the adjective that it's masculine because it's not me'orot gedolot, it's me'orot hagdolim. So it is masculine. There's some oddities like that in Hebrew. Don't ask me why. Um, but we just have to know that the plural there, me'orot, that tav, is a feminine plural, and the tav uh, shows that. In the second uh, example from Zechariah, we see two words here, rechovot, and uh, you might be familiar with a town in uh, Israel that's named rechovot. Uh, it's the pull of rechov. Now, rechov looks again like a masculine noun, but place names tend to be feminine. In Hebrew, it takes a feminine plural, rechovot. And then we see the plural for yalda, which is a, a little girl, and that is yeladot. It's right next to the plural for yeled, which is yeladim, masculine, and yeladot, we have that feminine plural. So that winds up our series on all the uses for the uh, Aleph Bet. 
for all the letters that are used. There are 22 letters in the alphabet, 11 of them, exactly half, have these varied uses. And some are limited uses, like the bet is just used uh, as a prefix for a preposition. And some of them have a lot of uses, like when we discovered the hay, there were three or four uh, prefix uses and three or four suffix uses. It's just all very interesting how the Father chose to bring this language together for us. So next time we're going to go on and do uh, a lesson on the Aleph Tav specifically, or maybe several lessons it will turn out to be. In the meantime, Tasimatei Nayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.